Hi, this is Piero. One thing that occurs to me as I'm discussing truth with people is people don't really understand uh, what the need for truth is. So we have all these things that we're discussing that people believe but can't really be proven. They're sort of logical little traps right at the end where you're trying to complete this proof of God. Okay, uh, a lot of us think, oh yeah, that well that one doesn't lead to a proof because it's not true, but it's got the same problem as proving objective reality. You know, as things are objects, conceived of as objects, they're things in themselves. We're not talking about our connection to them. We can never understand them as things in themselves. We can understand our part of a connection to them. You know, what those things mean to us and what their characteristics are, are to us. And so we have this, this problem of there's things that we believe we know are true, and yet we can't prove them. Now, a big goal of the uh, truth functional, logical, mathematical kinds of philosophers, which has been a lot of them in the sense that even the ones that don't tend to be that way still use logic and see the value of the, of the tools. But they've wanted to prove reality just from an analytical construct, you know, start from some axioms that are obviously true or whatnot. The problem is that every axiom um, can be doubted and so they need to be proven and so using logic um, there's this this issue of being disconnected well now i know girdle's theorem that's how i learned to pronounce it it's spelled godel but girdle uh i don't know if yeah, somebody can correct me but make it a video response if you do that so we can hear it. um but anyway uh <coughs> It's, you know, it's maybe misused in intellectual, um, you know, light conversation. Um, this incompleteness theorem, you know, as somehow nothing can be known. No. Let's be really specific. Okay, I'll try to do this quickly. Basically, there's these um, more and more abstract forms of logic. Okay, so the first logic is just you have statements. You know, Socrates is a man. Okay, then you can variableize and we say, well, like you know, if A, then B, and that's predicate logic. And then A can be anything, and B can be anything. So A could be Socrates, and, and um, I mean, Socrates is a man, and B can be, you know, the Socrates is more, whatever. The, anyway, the, the point is, um, okay, so uh, anyway, um, the next level is, um, is first order logic where you instead of saying Socrates is a man you say X is a man and X can be anything and then you can make statements like for all of the X you know if X is a man you know then X is mortal you can make these kinds of statements okay and that's variableizing over the objects now right all right well what girl proved was that in second order logic the next level of variabilization where you also can variabilize the concept so you don't even have um, is a man, you know. Uh, you, you, it's totally variableized. Okay, so f of x, where f can be anything and x can be anything. And then you start saying things like, well, for any f, you know, f of x implies. Well, what he showed is in the second order logic. Sorry. What he showed was that in the second order logic that there are statements that would be true or would be false that you could not prove true or false okay so they would be true but there would be no proof this made all the mathematical types really upset but listen what the thing is this first of all English is second order I mean it might be third order or something in addition but the point is in English you have statements about that are that are like this where you variableize over thinking um, and uh, especially when you're talking about morality and stuff I mean we're talking about for well for any morality uh, murder should be considered wrong <laughs> I believe that and that's for any set of ideas over well the thing is some of those statements are, are not going to be provable but they're still true so we're faced even in pure logic Okay, let alone being practical and the fact that we don't see everything, there's all these details. So, even with pure logic, there are things that are true 
that cannot be proven true. And you're faced with the decision of do you believe those things and how do you know those things in the first place? Okay. And um, the answer is empiricism. Okay, we are just sorting our sense experiences. So the way we find out what is true is compared to our sense experiences. That's the only way available to us. And that totally makes it no big deal, you know? I mean, I know that I like moralities where murder is illegal because I see the, the situations when murder is not illegal, especially if you include like war or as murder. You know, potentially, if one tribe is attacking another, you know, I see when that's oh, in the morality that I don't like the results. So I don't need to prove that with the logical system. You know, logical proofs are for just short line segments and so, short little uh, curves to get from one point to another. Logic will process one little set of thoughts into another little set of thoughts without distorting them or changing them much, or at least not in a, in a predictable way. So you kind of know that you're not introducing error. Of course, you, you do introduce a, a, a kind of an error. There are, is an ad artifact of trying to use logic to analyze something where you change the something. But anyway, the design of logic is to be pretty clean on that. And it is pretty clean. It's a pretty good process for these arcs. It just, you can't connect it all the way to the end. But you don't need to. You can jump almost arbitrarily large gaps by comparing with experience and that's how we have rules of thumb in other words heuristics because it can just be well, I notice when I get up earlier I'm healthier so people will just think hey if you get up early you're gonna be healthier they don't have to know that could be a huge gap you know it could be have nothing to do with getting up early it could be that well in the early morning you're the first one to get the fruit I mean they have you have no basis for connecting that it's just a heuristic because you can judge heuristics, you know, with experience. So, um, so really, we're using logic to break down really big heuristics into smaller chunks and figure out more and more. But all we're going to get in the end is really tiny heuristics, like, like the, um, like the rule of induction, or like um, the principle of conservation. You know, that leads to the conservation of energy and mass and everything in, in uh, science. But also, you know, just the idea that you know somebody comes from somewhere and their ideas come from somewhere it's the idea of conservation you know these are heuristics we can't literally prove them we certainly can't prove they'll be true in the future or, or even that they're literally true in the past but we know that when we test them they work and that's all that's the only way we ever know anything so um, you know but we break them down to something like the principle you know of conservation and that's a pretty tight little heuristic at least if I accept it you know on faith I know what I'm accepting you know it's not like these big accepting big things on faith where there's all sorts of parts you don't even know I mean so um, so anyway yeah so Gödel's uh, incompleteness theorem sort of makes us face the fact that yeah there's things we're gonna have to believe because they're true and uh, that we can't prove and it's like all is lost no um, there's this other method that we actually have been using all along anyway.